Well, 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 welcome back and wishing you a very happy uh, Tuesday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It is nice and bright and sunny. Side is very awesome. Hope that you're doing well. Hope that you're having the best Tuesday possible out there in cryptocurrency land. Bitcoin has been sleeping in the last day, but we actually have, do have a few things to talk about as the higher time frame starts to switch around. And let's get into the live scene right over here. And as always, wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. And let's get into the daily. Started off with the daily, as always. Bitcoin still holding above this yellow 20 month expansion moving average uh, right here, which is coming in around 37, uh, 30, we could call it. And I would actually be very comfortable with saying that as long as Bitcoin's above there, you know, you could still map out the more lenient bullish scenario uh, with Bitcoin, you know, perhaps running back up and uh, maybe even testing the 89 exponential all the way at 80, uh, what is this, 39.50. However, I am overall bearish. And the second that this uh, 21 exponential moving average breaks on the daily, I would be looking for a move back down below 3700 uh, most likely finding support around 3550 ish area so again you know if you want to keep it on the higher time if you want to keep it simple that is what i'd be thinking we do have our daily stoke started to really gain momentum down right now obviously we will be heading out of the bullish control zone very soon unless if uh, any defense is had but again anytime that the stokes have gotten into this range it actually has been damn good at calling major dumps for the last year i mean this was you know we, we got we got all the way to 90 i mean the last time that we were at 90 or even a little bit below 90 was in your early September dump from 7,400 to 600 to 6,000. Uh, then the time before that was your early August dump from 8,400 to 6,000. Then the time before that was, well, your May dump from 10,000 to 6,000. And the time before that was... February last year, so little, quite literally, getting each and every la each and every one of the last uh, major highs of this consolidation above six thousand perfectly. So the fact that we got up there once again is, you know, is very interesting to me. Also, the daily jewel, which I, uh, which also got up into this range, and actually a little bit more precise, a little bit more uh, telling you that this move that we saw was pretty damn advanced as far as the major tops that we've looked at for the last year now again this is in no way shape or form a signal on the jewel but it, it does help me get a gauge of the power of that move and again in the same magnitude of the last few highs that we've seen again you know the 7400 8400 uh, 10,000 and then the the 12,000 double top from last year so really when whenever it's gone into this range it actually has lined up with major dumps again that is not the main way to use a jewel if you have the access to the jewel that's not the, like that i don't i don't consider that like a trade or anything like that but it is interesting to me that that it has been damn good at calling those for quite literally last year perfectly on the actual top uh not only that but daily rsi is uh is very comfortably below the exponential right now trending below the exponential actually more importantly um again i you know it, it's interesting because I would actually like to see a little bit of a bounce here, come back up and fill the gap um, on CME futures at around 3750, um, 39, or sorry, 3750, 3950 is the word that I'm looking for, um, or perhaps around here at 3900. You know, if you're looking on the daily, you'd be saying about 3900 is where the gap does indeed lie. Uh, lower time frames, though, could get a lot higher as the gap's all the way at 3930, and this is trading at about a $10 discount right now. So, you know, it'd be another 10 bucks on spot, most likely. Um, but of course, you know, Daily on, on CMEs right here is going to start to switch around. Daily stokes coming down. Uh, I don't believe that's fully confirmed just yet, but looking at the daily RSI, just getting back below the exponential right here, trending below there. You know, I do actually put more weight on this chart. You know, you could also, you could make the argument that, uh, hey, we're holding up the, above the 10 simple moon average right here, but I don't really... Uh, it, you know, uh, yes, I want to see it. I want to see a retest back into this range, but I, I would think that it'd probably get rejected. Um, so overall it's, it's, it's a matter of when, not if, uh, in my opinion, now that is an opinion type thing, which I do not trade my opinion. My opinion is worthless. Um, I trade technical analysis, but Hey, looking at our lower time frames, they are starting to switch around once again as well. Uh, hourly dildo time frame right over here actually just got death cross, which is not a big deal. I mean, an hourly is not gonna, you know, it's not gonna have like the same implications as like a four hour a daily, you know, weekly, that type of thing, of course, but it does, you know, it leads on to the, it leads on to the, you know, the downwards effect, the butterfly effect that produces all the other time frames starts switch around so obviously you got to start first start small with the hourly or perhaps even the one minute if you're really desperate if you're really desperate you'll be looking at the one minute first and then once that one switch around then you go to the two minute and then you'll go to the five minute no don't do that or at least if you want to keep your fucking sanity don't fucking do that um of course it's not financial advice I'm not financial advice i'm also not trying to be your uh, your goddamn dad just sharing what's worked for me and in, uh, in my experience here just make sure that i'm recording over here as uh you have no idea how many videos I've started recording in like 20, 30 minutes into. I'm like, oh, 
Mike's not on. Great one, Crown. Fucking great one. I just can't wait until I get this camera to work as well. Um, anyways, hourly over here, yes, is is getting death cross. We are below all major moving averages. And we are using this 377 as support, which is currently 3770. So if I want to make a little bit of a preliminary decision, uh, if we broke 3770, uh, yeah, on an hourly, then yes, that's probably going to have the the follow through implications that I'm looking for for at least a test back down to the low 3700 area. However, I really want to see, you know, what I want to see for an actual trade is that 3730 area to break on the daily. As if that were to happen, then 3550 is going to likely be our next area of support. In fact, I think it's best said with our with our drawing tools, uh, open and honest. But yeah, there will be support at 3650. I I think if Bitcoin comes down there though, I don't think that it bounces. That I think that it would also it would come all the way down to the 618, about 35 uh, 30ish area, just where we kind of uh, spent what was it? You know, about a week testing it um, on 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 this. Uh, what do you want to call it? Phase? I don't know what you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. Um, that's what I'd be saying. But hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing is that so far, Bitcoin has been bouncing off this yellow 20 month exponential. So I want to be very, very clear with separating my opinion from technical analysis. Technical analysis says, wait, well, hold your, hold your fucking horses, man. Hold your fucking horses because overall, until this actually breaks, I mean, this is actually a better posturing than it is not as far as this area goes. Um, and if we actually were to lift off from here, we're going to get a good cross of the yellow 21 exponential and the green 55 exponential. But that brings me to my next point, which is, which is again, kind of laying out why to me, this is more a matter of a time rather than, rather than path. Um, and if we actually do get the yellow and the yellow and green to cross, uh, they have crossed in the past and they have produced some very well, uh, some, some amazing results. If you're bearish and you like big red dildos or some not so impressive results if you are uh, bullish and the last time that we actually had these snaking around was right here where they actually did cross up for just one day on the beautiful fake out before this massive bearish dildo just shoving all 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 it, all it down all the way from 7400 to 6000 uh decent volume on this guy but again you know they cross for a second and then boom down and so you see something similar on this guy right over here yes they cross and you actually get another leg on this consolidation or sorry not, not on this consolidation but on this trap you get another leg up but once you come back down and violate and close below that yellow 20 exponential and keyword close below it which is why i have my eyes on that right now that was the end of the rally the, once you close below it over here that was i mean you know <laughs> you did you did a lot of damage before him but hey it was the end of the rally and you had some more continuation on after uh, after that more importantly and then same thing right over here the last time that we had a cross beat uh, right over here you know you have a last dish kind of last grasp last grasp at a rally and then fall right on over as soon as you close below the yellow 20 month exponential right here it comes back retest it and then it doesn't you know you're 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 being governed by it all the way down to 6000 from 10000 amazing trade amazing trade even though you might feel like you have missed some of the move on first pass and then same thing over here as well um or actually sorry no they did not cross the upside over here uh, funnily enough or perhaps not funnily enough um the last downwards cross took you all the way to 6,000 from uh, I think 13,000. So not bad, not bad at all. But again, that's why I have my eyes on this area. And that's why I want to see it close. I need to see it close below until it actually closed below. This is all just, you know, this is all just ideas, which I don't care to really trade off of. But at the second that it closes below, then yes, I'd be looking for, you know, I'd be looking for a move to retest kind of the bottom of the range. You know, that 3550 uh, area almost is the bottom of the range now because this rising trend line that's been governing our lower bottoms would be coming in around that area. Area. Also going to be, be met by the 618 Fibonacci retracement, very important one. And I'll just put a lot of importance on this area right here. As a second that you violate this area, you're going to... You're going to destroy, start to destroy the structure. So, so far, it looks like we have some sort of a... What we really have going on is something like this, actually, where Bitcoin broke out of this you know we had some sort of a triangle going on right here breaks out but this is a hunt you know this is a hunt on a weekend beautifully done on a saturday by the way that reminds me i wanted to talk about this and i completely, for, completely forgot about this yesterday um but when you have big moves on a weekend typically they get faded what do i mean by that well on the weekend is the best time to do a hunt why is that 
because there's less people playing most of the most of the institutional players you know most of the people who are trading for like a big firm or, or something like that um you know quants and whatnot they're going to be taking the weekends off not all they probably put their put their trading activities on like you know like a low buzz hum but for the most part a lot of people are going to be you know taking the days off so it's not going to be as big what is that what does that mean for cryptocurrency land well it means that the books are not going to be as robust not that they are too robust to begin with but they're going to be pretty damn thin and flimsy is, is what i'm trying to say so if you do want to do a massive hunt it's best to do it on a weekend because it's going to cost you the less if you want to run you know run um run the orders up you know to, uh, hunt everyone stops out you know re uh, wreck all of the over leverage traders and then back down again even more so right you know right right as uh, world markets open up on late sunday or, or early monday for for uh for the asian community or sorry the asian the asian trading world it's like the asian community what the fuck does that even mean i don't know um but my point is is that hey you know be uh, be aware of those uh, of those kind of flighty price action movements um, over the weekend. So again, from a higher level time frame perspective, I am overall bearish as long as we are below the 89 exponential now. But it's a question of, okay, when is the right time to actually put on a position? Of course, if we break the 21 exponential to the downside, happy to, happy to put on a position there. By the same token, Bitcoin could very easily rally back up and fill the gap that we were looking on on CMEs at around 3,900 or 3,930. And that would be an area that I'd be interested in also putting on a trade on. And then use the 89 exponential on the daily at 3950 to kind of manage risk upon. So right now, it does look like there's more pressure on this um, area than there is not. In fact, I think it's starting to look like this was kind of the this was kind of the rally that I was looking for yesterday when we were on live stream at uh, 3850. I mean, may, maybe if Bitcoin kind of uh, goes sideways at this level at this uh, 3750 level for another day, then, then we'll get another try. But I would imagine that there's actually more pressure on it right now than not. Um, and with this with this area right here, just consolidating as these moving averages approach each other, it's likely going to provide the impetus for some nice uh, some um, some nice you know enhanced selling so to speak. Uh, so yes, I believe our two hour stokes are also headed down right now as well. So medium, so very, so low and medium time frame oscillators are still headed down. Uh, three hour actually still headed up or sorry, not just headed up, but, but headed up. Um, six hour about to cross up. Eight hour is still down. 10 hour is still down. 12 hour is still down. Just getting into the neutral zone. And like we said, the daily is down as well. Not only that, but I do want to get on over here to the two day dildo time frame, which has been very good on the stokes as well. Um, we are losing momentum, but it is not confirmed as of just yet. And we're kind of out in no man's land. We're in the bullish control zone. So I am split on this guy as well. And in fact, when I look at the two-day dollar time timeframe, you can see that the yellow 21 exponential is actually literally in the same area as the daily. And I'd be kind of using it in the same way. In fact, the 10 simple is providing some support right now. In fact, the, the two-day dollar time timeframe, I believe, gets things better. I do believe it gets things better. But with this area confirmed as a local high, um, we, oh, that's, oh, that's right. We don't, we're not going to have hidden bearish divergence. Can't be, it's not making, it, it made a higher high. Uh, fair enough. Uh, it's just almost, almost talked complete nonsense. Uh, but again, a, a full on rejection of the green 55 exponential and, uh, and, and this area right here still, you know, holding up the support. But funnily enough, the two day time timeframe for Bitcoin will look very similar to the daily for CMEs. Just look at this. And this is why I really like the two day time timeframe. Uh, and this, now we're going to go over to CMEs, which, you know, we got rejected from the green 55 we're kind of holding up above the red 10 simple beans and then you know preliminary support below on the uh, uh with behold with with having the 21 exponential so again the two-day total time frame helps get rid of a lot of the noise that you see on weekends and uh when you see it when you see it like this it makes a lot more sense at least in my opinion um so with the two-day stoke starting to get a little bit exhausted it is also on you know it, it's on the menu it's on the menu but again full-on confirmation as far as i'm concerned to the downside i need to see a close below 37 uh, 30 we could call it. if we start closing maybe four hour totals below let's say if we start if we close them below 3700 then yeah it, you know it can make the call as a uh, there's there's very little holding up from about 3550 3600 um if that were to happen but again uh the daily is going to be the most important thing here and the higher time frames are really coming into massive you know ma the, the they are not just proximal they're like right fucking in front of us now as it's two days until the end of february right so let's go look at the monthly and keep in mind what the monthly is saying as the monthly is quite nasty indeed the monthly is flirting right around this green 55 exponential and what's up uh 
Francisco. Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, the green 55 exponential on the monthly is right around the corner now. It is right around 36.79. So we are quite literally about $100 above it at the current moment in time. And if Bitcoin does close below it by end of month, literally by the end of the month, it just has to do, you know, by like one minute before the clock turns to March 1st of 2019, uh, it would be confirmed kill of this green 55 exponential moving average. And again, with the overall posturing of these, you know, of, uh, of these last three monthly deals, this looks like consolidation to me. If we go over here to Bitstamp, which has a lot better, it's like just a lot easier of a chart to read for volume. You can't use BLX for volume. Um, it does look like consolidation. I mean, look at the volume signature down around here. And even on the lower time frames, that's exactly what we see. I mean, if you go to the three day, look at this, look at this. Yes, we did kind of put in a fucked up formation, but look at the volume here just telling you that this is, you know, all, you know, all of the same, all, all of the same flock, I suppose you could say. Um, so again, you know, looking at something like that, it does make me really think that, you know, it, it's more, it's more like my opinion is that it's much more likely that we end below the 55 than not. And that's going to likely, you know, incite these two moving averages to move ever so closely together. I don't think that they're going to cross on the next tick, but they're going to get really fucking close and just going to intensify the sell program. So if we actually do confirm, a, if we do confirm a kill of the green 55 exponential by both opening and clo closing this monthly dildo below it um, of February, then that'll be the first time in Bitcoin's history. And I'd be looking town towards this area of 25 hundred if that were to happen uh last month obviously we closed below it for the first time in history but really i need to see both an open and close below it uh which will which we'll have a chance to do in the next couple of days um assuming it, but again 36 80 let's just call it 36 80 yeah you know I, I think that's like the easiest one to remember 36 80 if we can close below that then yeah you know that's that's exactly what i'm thinking um and that's going to all be set up just you know perfectly like so uh, you know, you, uh, I mean, looking at your monthly RSI, what's going on here? I mean, we just kind of, uh, we just kind of dipped into the, uh, into the bearish control zone for the first time in a very long time. Um, actually the lowest it's ever been on the monthly, funnily enough. I mean, even, just looking at the RSI though, it actually looks to be quite honest, the RSI looks like it wants to test upwards. The RSI just looks like it wants to kind of snap back a little bit, but Hey, uh, monthly Stokes getting really fucking low. They can stay down here for quite some time, though. Um, just like they stayed up here for, you know, almost a year. They were actually, quote unquote, overbought it's literally for a year from December 2016 all the way to January 1st of 2018. So actually over a little bit over two years or sorry, one year. Or is, yes, one year. <laughs> so they can definitely stay down there as well. But it is, you know, it, it is interesting to me. So this next monthly dollar close is going to be absolutely critical to the more discretionary direction of of, of Bitcoin. Um, so again, if Bitcoin were to actually close above it, does that mean I get like automatically bullish? No, absolutely not. But I would be looking for this correction to get extended um, or this consolidation likely to get extended probably into the mid, maybe even high 4,000s if that were to happen. Uh, but again, you know, uh, the macro timeframes are where it's all at right now, especially with this monthly closing soon, but I'm going to bring it over here to the weekly and the weekly, you know, as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly deals below the purple 200 exponential moving average, which is coming in right around 4120, I have no real reason to be, to be not bearish. Um, we're still in a bearish market as long as we're below there, as far as I'm concerned. This is because, and I run with these assumptions because, um, you know, Bitcoin, I don't believe has put in a bottom. I do believe that Bitcoin will be going lower over time, but time it can be that very fickle bitch and can take, well, quite literally time. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, this can, this is likely to take months and months and months and months and months. Uh, you know, probably, you know, I mean, does Bitcoin find a low before the end of the year? I think probably very likely. Uh, but then again, does that, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin just immediately gets bullish after that. I mean, look at what happens in the past. Once you find your lows over here, you go sideways for a year and it's probably going to take even longer in this segment as uh, Bitcoin has matured a little bit. It's become a nice, a nice grown up, a uh, nice grown up cone. Um, anyways, so when I'm looking at something like this, I will use the 200 exponential on the weekly to kind of judge, okay, are we changed around anything in the macro preliminarily speaking? Now, of course, if we actually were able to both open and close a weekly dildo above the purple 200 exponential, I would drastically change my tone on Bitcoin. However, technically speaking, it would, it would not be, it would not be the final nail in the coffin for, for the bearish market being over. There's a couple of things, you know, namely the monthly going back on over here. I need to see a monthly dildo close above the yellow 21 expansion movement average. Again, where I come from is uh, I have a background as being a professional market maker 
Maker Authorized Trader on New York Stock Exchange ARK. And what I would look at was the monthly for uh, for stocks to kind of judge if they were if they were generally bullish, generally bearish by looking at the monthly 20 month exponential. And as you can see right now, Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> having only <laughs> really enjoying living below it is what it looks like to me. Uh, you, last, you also notice in 2014, 2015 mark cycle, once Bitcoin broke the 21 exponential to the downside, that's when things got quite, uh, quite nasty. And then actually, once it broke it back to the upside, literally right here, that was that was the beginning of your bullish momentum. That I would argue that this was a perfect entry right here. As soon as you close right back above it, just because you're no longer going sideways in dead money, and now you're going, you know, you're you're in a you're you're in a market that's moving up. So you're you're satisfying both the opportunity cost uh, segment of it and also just the fact that you're now in a fucking uptrend. Uh, but of course, Bitcoin well and far away from that area. So that would be macro event number two. That would be huge if Bitcoin could actually close back above it. But that's all the way at 5350, 5400 ish area. It's got a lot of work to do. And then, of course, the third and final and most important area, although you're probably going to know beforehand, probably by by means of the monthly and probably, you know, honestly, even the weekly as well, is if Bitcoin closes, closes back above 6,000, the area of breakdown that we spent about a year is going sideways at. Well, that's no have no reason to be bearish if that would happen um, any longer. So, again, that's kind of what I'm thinking of right now. And that's what I always want to repeat to myself, because until one of those until those three things happen, it's always going to be a question mark in the back of my mind. Of course, you know, it's one kind of one kind of in, in, in increases the likelihood of the other. But but even with the weekly not being hit up, that is concerning. And again, Bitcoin not really hitting any of the things that I'm looking for to kind of be demonstrative of a major market cycle low. And I'll just kind of briefly go through those things in my long-term analysis video, I go through a, a much more detailed explanation of these things. So definitely check that out. It's like, you know, it's it's like an hour long just dedicated to that sort of fact. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely go check out that playlist, but just kind of name them off really quickly. The volume on the low, not good enough. The time spent at the low, not good enough. The reaction off the low, not good enough. The return to the low over here within a few percentage, really fucking suspect as well. Uh, the MVT signal, also not signaling a low, which has been perfect in Bitcoin's history. The uh, the historical volatility rank, also not signaling a low, which also has been, uh, which has been proven um, to to get all of the lows uh, prior perfectly and um, and also the the external data like the longs and the shorts the longs and the shorts over here very not it very not indicative of what an actual low looks like um, I mean we really want to see these these statistics flipped we want to see a drastic uh, a, a drastic favor in shorts rather than longs right now we have 20 we have over 26,000 open longs and a little over 18,000 open shorts with um one in a uh, one in a third of these guys hedge so really 17,000 open naked shorts so what does that mean well basically that means that <laughs> everyone's kind of on the other side of the trade so you really want this to be quite little the opposite if the bear market was going to be over we don't we don't really have that right now um, funnily enough, I mean, shorts are still paying no fucking interest rate. You're, it's like it's free to short right now. Longs, longs have been paying an interest rate all the way through. So again, um, just showing kind of the, showing the, showing what people, people like actual positions are representing right now. Let's also look at the crypto fear and greed index, which got all the way up to a 69 just a few days ago. That means that people were more optimistic at that run at 4,000 than they were at any other time in the past year except for the February double top at 12,000. Now, again, when this ticks up in an overall downwards trend, which we are still in a downwards trend, it's very much a downwards trend until, you know, until proven otherwise. Uh, whenever this gets extremely, you know, optimistic or even above the 50 marker, it has called the ma it has called the major drops really fucking well. So again, just another thing telling me to be on the lookout for the next major local high, the next potential reversal. I'd be I'd probably be uh, be cool with with look with with calling this area it if we were to if we were to destroy the daily twenty one exponential and that also reminds me of something else I need to talk about beforehand that's actually a little bit easier to do um, but each and every time that Bitcoin has got up to these levels you know major dump I mean again double top at twelve thousand in February last year uh, top at ten thousand in May last year top at uh, eighty four hundred in in late July last year top at i mean six six thousand like literally right before six thousand breaks so people were more optimistic on that run than they were at any other time when bitcoin was technically in a better position bitcoin was technically in a better position um except for you know except for february of last year um uh, on on all of these runs than it was just this past weekend but people were more excited so that offers up the the, the amazing potential for a massive trap 
as again no macro no macro areas have been ticked off this is a very important part okay on to the on to the thing that i wanted to just talk about uh the three day 21 exponential right here i'd actually be even a little bit more um i'd, I'd actually be looking at the three day 21 exponential as a better gauge of taking a trade but because it does close by end of day so don't have to wait too long it's gonna be the same as a daily but if we do close below this yearly 20 month special um by end of day at 7 p.m eastern time which is 34 sorry 3800 oh my god my dyslexia is getting so intense it's it's almost impossible to read this uh 3800 if we actually close below 3800 i would be looking for this to have continuation um immediately uh, immediately. I mean, again, each and every time that Bitcoin's actually gotten above the yellow 20 month exponential for the past year on the three-day dollar time frame, uh, the second that it actually closes below was when the red dildo party begins. You have this area right here. You know, again, your your September dump from 7,400 to 6,000. You know, breaking it right here, obviously. That uh, and, and right when you break below it, I mean, yeah, you have a little bit more continuation. Not all that much though. Um, uh, the time before that was right here, obviously breaking below it, and then continuation all the way back down to 6,000. The time before that was you know 10,000 breaking right here. And then more continuation, blah, 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 you, you know, you get it. And then this time over here. So uh, just another thing kind of aligning with that factor, you know, and agreeing with the other things that we looked at. Um, so something that I do want to keep in mind uh, by end of day. Now, if we close above the yellow 20 minutes potential by end of day, then the waiting game continues, right? The waiting game continues as it is a three-day dildo. So it's going to take its time, right? But uh, but that's kind of what I want to show um, with all of that. Lower time frames is, is where all the action is going down right now, though. And again, support 37.50, uh, we could say. Resistance 36.50. Uh, Just basically what we saw yesterday. I mean, something like this. Uh, the death cross is happening right at this resistance, so that's typically not a good sign. Uh, on the hourly, again, this is a fucking hourly death cross. Like, it's not a big deal. It, it it's the, it's it's a big deal because it can lead on to implications for all the other time frames, um, which got undeath cross all the way up to I think a six hour. Funnily enough, so where's the two hour at right now? Yeah, two hour is very very far away. It's the green fifty five and the purple two hundred is what I'm looking at. Um, in fact, you see a very obvious support coming around this area. So it's you know, I would not rule out another test to the 38.50 area. I mean, and if that area breaks, then we could finally get a test at 39.50. In fact, that's what I'd like to see more, to be quite honest with you. I'd like to see that more just because it would offer up the potential for a, a, a better risk-reward position as far as I'm concerned. Again, with using the daily 89 as, as uh, the daily 89 as kind of a risk management tool all the way at 39.50. Um, which would also be around the 236 for an archer tracement close enough as well. So again, that's kind of what I'm waiting for. I'm pretty much holding tight right now. I don't really have any real positions going on. Just waiting for price action to kind of give me the next piece of the puzzle here. Do we break this area first, 3730, or do we break this area first, uh, 30 or 3850? Whichever one happens, that's going to lead on to the next potential trade um, opportunity. Okay, so we talked about all that. Let's go talk about um, GBDC. What did GBDC do yesterday? Uh, GBDC did, man, this, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this OTC bullshit is so fucking, ugh. I mean, you come back, you fill the gap right here, get rejected immediately. Still holding above this area right here. So four, uh, 465 is the area to beat. What does the daily look like? Yeah, daily, looks, daily just looks like a reversal and then continuations. Uh, but still holding above this support right here, you know, support 448 and uh, resistance 465. Uh, also, the green 55 exponential on the daily. The uh, GBDC looks like it kind of wants to go up here, actually. I believe that we do have some bearish divergence. Yes, we do. So maybe, you know, but but just looking at uh, just looking at dildos kind of looks like it wants to give another try. But overall, I don't have a strong opinion on this, quite honestly. And the reason and the reason why I don't have a strong opinion on this is because I don't really need to right now, as it hasn't been too far off what Spot is doing. It's not really it hasn't really been leading or or following. They're kind of like trading in in, in tandem with each other right now. Uh, there's not really too much to be made out of it. Um, so that's, that's what I can say about that. I put more weight on these CMEs, which, which do show a little bit more downwards, uh, bias. Um, um, let's go over to the, let's go over to Mr. Buter all over here. How's Mr. Butter, how's Mr. Buttersworth doing? I mean, same, same deal right here. You know, the 21 exponential on the daily, that's all, that's all I'll be looking at. That's coming in right around 135 and a half. 135 and a half. That's also the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. If that area breaks, then I'd be looking down around to 117. One, uh, 115, 1, 117 in, in this range right here. Just retested this this thing that we broke out of. This ascending trend line going all the way back to May, to the May high of $800. Uh, did get broken last week, February 17th. 
but I would imagine that if we were to pop back down, if we were to actually break the 21 exponential, if we were to actually to break 135 to the downside, that's where I'd be looking towards. I'd, I'd be looking towards, you know, 115, 160 and retest that area. Uh, but overall, you know, Mr. Buttersworth basically just getting, getting to your prior highs. I mean, right here, it's right fucking here, right? Um, we have the bull trap above the red box, but we can get rid of that now because it's not necessarily too, it's not necessarily too important right now. Um, and then basically, I mean, you could even consider this front run of the pink 200 simple and then uh, shoved right back down major, major volume on this rejection. But again, look at the overall volume characteristics of this whole consolidation. You have the nice orderly drop off in volume, which tells me that this is, you know, this is likely a, <laughs> it's likely a bearish consolidation. Um, again, for Mr. Buterall, as long as you're below, I mean, more conservatively speaking, 220, uh, still from a technical pr uh, perspective, it is in a bearish, uh, is in a bearish market. If you want to be like super literal, um, let's see what our, let's see what our high time frame also does are doing. Uh, daily Stokes coming down. What about two day? I'm curious what these guys are doing. Two days are, two day are actually, uh, are two day, uh, two day is going to be, <laughs> um, they are actually hitting at a cross down right now, but not confirmed as of just yet. And we'll actually take another day to fully confirm. Uh, it won't be until tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Actually, the last time that we should, that, that we should, that should we, the, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I can't even talk. The last time that we got into this area was, uh, was the high in early January, by the way. And by the way, off the same sort of event, right? Uh, Mr. Butero having a constant, stance, constant, it's the, it's having a fucking upgrade, okay? That's what's going on. And typically, when you get upgrades, when you get when you get events, you get event mentality, you get event psychology, and uh, just like what you saw before, you know, the bigger accounts, the market movers will use that event to create the illusion of a bullish posturing of, of, of bullish pressure because the retailers are likely to think that, oh my God, Mr. Buterall is having an event and it's having an upgrade that everyone fucking knew about for like months and months prior. But it's going to change the world. It's going to solve all of our problems, and that's what we need, guys. Buy it up all to the moon. <laughs> but then you kind of realize, well, you know, bigger accounts will use this to generate liquidity for themselves because they know that they can create that illusion. And then now when they actually get everyone on the wrong side of the trade, looking at the crypto fear and greed index, looking at how optimistic people are, looking at how, looking at the uh, looking at the underlying market dynamics with the longs and shorts, it's very quickly revealed that, well, <laughs> Now we have liquidity. It's what we have for the downside. We have buyers because people are people are looking to be buyers who think that that's you know changes everything. But understand that you know events typically produce the same sort of result. I mean, it doesn't even matter what the event is. You, with event psychology, you get event psychology result. Not diff, I mean, events are large are most are mostly the same, and you can, and you know this to be true probably already. But you know, just just ask yourself, what's the difference between when 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 Justin Sun uh, of Tron comes out and says, "We have an announcement. We are public. We are we are making a strategic partnership with a public toilet company." It's like, what does that even mean? Nobody knows. It's a smart toilet. It, it watches your asshole for for yourself. We already have the bidets for that. Who gives a fuck? But you know, that sort of event will have a very similar result to what a exchange listing event for for insert random shitcoin here will have and also a very similar result to if you're familiar with stock market like an earnings report or or forwards look or revenues and all these sorts of things they get played up and then once the event actually happens typically you know <laughs> the other the other side takes over um so again check that out uh let's go to Miss, mrs litecoin mrs litecoin oh mrs litecoin did did regain the 200 simple moon average on the daily yesterday and using it so far as support again major area for mrs litecoin is 43 and a half dollars you break 43 and a half dollars very likely coming all the way back down to about 3950 um by the same token as long as you're using this 200 simple as support i'd, I'd be looking for that test back up to 48 dollars 48 and a half dollars um, but same thing for Mrs. Litecoin, you know, is making this rising, you know, what do you want to call it? Rising wedge, rising channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Typically a bearish dis uh, distribution pattern and uh, still governed all the way through on the highs and rejected so far. I believe that we do have some, we have three strikes of bearish divergence, one, two, three, back below the exponential as well. Um, you know, daily stokes obviously coming down. Uh, I would be looking for this to come further down. The question is, do we get a test back up to 38, uh, 38 50 first, or do we break 30, uh, 43 and a half first, whichever one happens first. That's the next trade that I'm looking to make. There's no tr real trade to be made within the, within the confines of this range right here. I'm not, you know, it's, it's not really too interesting. Um, 
I'm, I'm looking for the high quality trades, which, you know, if, if we do break this area, I mean, very, 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 very likely to, to take a stab back down to this like 39, 39 and a half dollar region. In fact, you can make the same sort of trend line for Mrs. Likewin as we did for, uh, Mr. Buterell, although, albeit uh, Mrs. Lightcoin's trend line is not as not as dramatic, uh, but going back all the way over here to this consolidation in September, October, November, which we actually broke out of a couple of weeks ago. Um, if we were to come back down, I'd be looking for this area to be retested over, again, just coming around about 39 bucks, give or take a few a few cents here or there. Um, okay, cool. What else do we want to look at? Uh, we can go look. At, we can do the the usual rounds of the of the A through Z caches, starting with Z cash. Uh, Z cash looks bad. Wants to come down. Uh, lost twenty one exponential already. Wants to come down. Daily Stokes coming down. Uh, daily RSI giving you. Do we have divergence here too? Uh, we don't have divergence, but we're back below the exponential, looking to me like it wants to come lower. Uh, Bcash, we got Zcash and Bcash. Bcash uh, actually getting above the daily twenty one exponential, but finding resistance on that uh, red ten simple. Again, uh, daily SOS coming down. Same thing with your RSI. It looks the exact fucking same as as uh, Zcash. Now we got Tron Cash. What is Tron Cash doing? Looks like it wants to come down as well. Loss of 21 off that massive Darth Maul dildo, uh, and looks to me like he wants to have some more down. Daily Daily Stokes just having a fresh cross down, staying healthily in the bearish control zone. Uh, same thing with the RSI getting rejected at the exponential. Uh, what about Neo Cash? Neo Cash. Uh, yeah, it wants to come down, but well, I shouldn't say that. This is this is probably the it probably had one of the better reactions. Although, are we doing something like this? Is that what we're doing? Ah, it's revealed. It is revealed. Doing something like this. So yeah, I'd say that over overall bearish. Uh, EOS EOS cash. Um, as long as you're below four dollars forty four cents, not too not too impressed. As long uh, what else we got? We we got Ripple cash getting listed on Coinbase, and that's going to change the world, right? Wait, is that an event? Oh, fuck! You know, Brad Gogg is going to be knocking on the door. Ring, ring. Hero, please. <laughs> That'll be $2 for every ripple cone that you got. Uh, again, getting rejected right at the top of this ascending trend line. What are we forming right now on Ripple Cash? <laughs> what are we forming right now on Ripple Cash? An ascending triangle. Now, of course, I say this with Ripple Cash, and I, I, do, I don't short Ripple Cash. I mean, it, it can it it is it has printed some very god awful chart formations in the past, and it does some weird things. So, I you know I'll just put it out I'll just put it out there. Uh, yeah, we do have our daily stokes even still with yesterday's move still coming down. Um, but obvious resistance you could use right here, uh, thirty four cents. I would be a little bit more I'd be a little bit more conservative than that than that and say thirty four and a half cents as long as you're below thirty four and a half cents and nothing's changed in the last three months. As long as you're below that area, I'm overall you know overall bearish on this guy. Although this one one does have a better posture than the others uh, needs to close above 31 and a half cents by end of day to 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 kind of maintain that though um, otherwise problems uh, but yeah the but yeah also it is not not looking too hot over there uh, what about Monero Cash? Monero Cash looking like looking like it wants to come down as well. Retest this area, uh, forty eight bucks. Um, what about uh, Stellar Cash? Stellar Cash uh, looking pretty bad as well. Looking pretty bad as well. Finding resistance right here and then down. So again, while I am looking for a test back up, you know, for Bitcoin, uh, looking at the alts, they make me think weaker than not. Now, what do I put more weight? What do I put more weight on? I put more weight on 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 Bitcoin, of course, when it comes to charting, but. Looking at the alts, uh, they are signaling weakness, so it's telling me to be, you know, be be aware and be and, and <laughs> please be safe. XX. Um, we okay. We did Litecoin Cash. We did GBDC. We did we did CME futures. Okay, great. Let's go look at uh, traditional marks really quick. Traditional marks coming down by end of day, finding resistance right at this horizontal that we've been looking at for ages. Yes, we did get a wick above, but that's fine. It's all about the 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 end of the day close, uh, getting shuffled right back down to the two three six bit on true retracement, basically getting rejected the, at the prior one two three highs. So yes, we have come back down all the way to fill the gap, but I do think that this one does start to come down a little bit more here. Uh, this was a nice rejection. This was a nice rejection. Daily stokes crossing back down. I'm curious what the, well, the 12 hour is going to look the exact fucking same. Let's go to the hourly. Uh, hourly looks like it wants to come down more. Uh, sell signal on the jewel for the hourly. Sell signal, on, I mean, stokes kind of coming down as well. Uh, RSI, you know, printing some divergences along the way. I'd look for this one to come down actually. Um, 277 and a quarter is kind of where I'd be looking towards. Yes, we do have support technically speaking at 279. So we need to actually formally see that break first. But hey, if 279 breaks, and yes, I do start looking. Looking towards 277. If 277 breaks, then things get a lot more interesting as I don't see too much holding you up from about 270 to 274 ish area. 
um, in this kind of block right here. But overall, you know, first things first, got to see 239 break. But I do think that you, you know, what, you know, may, maybe it, maybe it pops down here and then tries again at that high and puts in, you know, just grinds it once again, putting in some more divergence. But I do think that this one probably does, probably does actually see a little bit of downturn right now. But again, if you're looking at technical analysis, that's what I'd be looking at. Opinion does say I'm looking for a pullback here. Although, of course, it's not really appropriate to be talking about a reversal, like a legitimate reversal until this thing breaks down below at the very least 269 but i'd even say more traditionally speaking about 262 that's what i'd be saying on that guy um overall you know you got you got a lot of good things on the higher time frames i'll put it that way so i wouldn't necessarily want to be bearish just yet i i would not be bearish is what i'm trying to say uh so yeah let's go back on to mr bitcoin we'll, we'll start to wrap this bitch up again mr bitcoin um very very clearly on the do we want to just keep it? Do we want to keep it on the hourly or, or the? Uh, no, we'll keep it on the hourly. Okay, hourly support, uh, 3730. If that area breaks, I'm looking towards, uh, well, 3650 is going to be support, but I'm looking towards 3550 if that were to break. Uh, by the same token, resistance at 3850. If that area breaks, then I would love to get a position at 3950 ish area, right around this resistance, and use that uh, essentially that, that same area to kind of manage risk upon anywhere in the low 3900s. Um, so an easy trade to be making. In fact, that's the trade that I want a lot more, but of course, you know, you never, you don't always get you want, get, you don't always get what, what you want. Um, so again, that's what I'm thinking right now. As long as we are below 3950 on the daily, as long as we're closing daily deals below the 3950 level, I am looking for shorts and I am overall bearish looking for this move to likely get to, to likely have some more continuations lower. So that's going to do it for this morning stream. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action, feeling a little bit sleepy myself, but you know what? Feeling just good enough to do a stream. So of course, uh, looking forward to that. If not, if I don't see you there, well, I want to wish you well. I want to wish you the best, the best, uh, Thursday. No. Tuesdays. Yes. Have a great Tuesday. Have a happy Tuesday. Um, and, uh, have a fat Tuesday as well. Anyways, I'm going to get off now and, uh, take care. See you soon.